The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? All right now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane. And y'all know how I give it up over here. On this channel, I provide syrup in the form of black news and celebrity updates. Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. So we definitely have quite a few topics to get into while you come in, while you hit thumbs up. First of all, I hope that you've had an amazing Valentine's Day. If it ain't already gotten amazing, I hope it can get a little amazing after dark, if you know what I'm saying. Hopefully you're not a February 15th type of girl. Um, or woman or person, right? Meaning that somebody ain't juggling you and somebody else. Hopefully you can get some love and appreciation and some romance today and not tomorrow, all right? But um, come on in, hit thumbs up, share the video. We have things that we need to talk about and then I gotta get out of here to tend to my own Valentine's Day. Me and Leo's father, we got some plans, okay? So Monique is into it again with some more people and I have a different take about it. Um, typically, I we need to discuss, okay? Monique is, I wouldn't even necessarily say beefing, right? But it's, it's some sticky situations with Monique clapping back at, 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 at certain people who had things to say about her today. Tyrese Gibson, singer Tyrese Gibson from the Fast and Furious and... Uh, you know, the Coca-Cola commercial from way back in the day. He's having another meltdown. I want to get into that very briefly. We obviously definitely need to discuss Michigan State University. I have some updates and some statistics based off of how things are going over here in America. And shout out to everybody who listens abroad. Um, I know I've got plenty of people in the UK who always let me know, UK and Canada, that they are um, enjoying the show. Um, and matter of fact, since everyone's in here and we're talking about different places, comment down below where you're from, in addition to your stacks of pancakes. I need the pancakes in the chat. Lil Duval is absolutely disgusting, all right? We're going to talk about him being a P-E-D-O um, in general, right? Or at least with his sentiments in the tweets. I'm not saying, I don't, I don't know if he's necessarily touched anyone, but he's definitely got some some questionable tweets, and even towards his own daughter. Very weird. We're also going to talk about Rihanna's halftime ratings, okay? Um, Shantiri Weems, I don't know if you all remember the story of the woman from D.C. who had a daycare, and one of the parents of one of the children who were in her care, her husband, like, drove the bus to get the student, or the, the children to and from, and she got a couple of complaints that her husband was doing some inappropriate stuff to the children being a creep again p-e-d-o and so she went to a hotel room and she shot him i have an update on that story because that was about june of last year we covered that and basically the streets was on her side because they felt like baby you did the right thing got an update on that story and there's so much more that we need to get into i don't plan on being here for longer than an hour and a half so we're gonna see if i can stay on task and deliver this news in an efficient way right y'all know i always got my sense of humor so we're gonna laugh we're gonna joke about some things but other things are more serious so hit thumbs up all right have a seat on the bus shout out to everybody in the live chat and as always let's get ready for takeoff shall we the plane is jane this is one of my favorite comments here she says i loves me some black and she said loves me some <laughs> black news she says is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out Okay, we got
got some, you know, Canada people, Texas in the building, Baltimore's in the building, Dallas, Houston, Caribbean. Okay, it's a lot of different places in the building. I'm so glad I can touch so many different regions and areas of people. Shout out to Michelle Denise McKinney for joining the membership. I feel like your name looks familiar, so I'm not sure if you're joining or rejoining, but either way, let me tell you something. Thank you, and I'm grateful for it, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. On today's episode of What the Hell is Wrong with Y'all? On today's episode, okay? Outside of what's wrong with y'all that haven't hit thumbs up on the video yet, 142 people here and 60 likes. I know y'all can do better than that. I mean, you can send me a couple dollars on Cash App or you can support for free by hitting thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing this video, okay? So on today's episode, we're we, we going to get right into it. It's Black History Month right? Every year we get this nonsense. We got restaurants serving chicken and watermelon and pretending that they don't know that it's offensive. In 2023, okay? In 2023, y'all still playing dumb and thinking that playing dumb is a defense and it's not. We see you. Tell me what the hell is this? Look at this. Look at this. Watch it. What's what's going on? White people out here for Black History Month with shirts that say so sorry with these little makeshift oars turned into oars and nooses mixed together and, and chains. But we don't want that. What's the matter with you? Anything but reparations. That's what y'all, Leo, come on. See, because obviously you bothered by this too, but I'm about to have to get you out of here. You're not going to interrupt this show. This is going to be a good show. So come on and get your pay. Okay, come on and get your pay, and then I'm going to put you out, because you're not going to be meowing throughout this whole show. No, you're not. Come on. Huh, 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 huh. Here. It's good. Here. Here's another one. I'm going to put you out. All right, one more. I'm so that going cute. All right. All right, now get down. Get down. Get that little butthole out of everybody's face. Come on, move, 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 move. So, what's this? What's this? This is what I want to know. Anything but reparations. All of this tokenism, Right. And I feel like they, they enjoy triggering us with that bogusness. Someone said, I can't find your cash app. It's right here on the screen. It's dollar sign T-H-A plainish Jane. Right. Um, so uh, anything. And, and at this point, I don't even think that cultural sensitivity training would make a difference. They're determined to do this because they want they want to trigger us and they understand that this ain't payback. Don't know. We don't want to hear you say sorry. We want reparations. Cut the check or keep it pushing. Just like the $10 million statue that didn't even do no justice. What do we need this for? We got Afro pick statues. We got George Floyd statues. All types of stuff. Keep it. We keep telling y'all what this is like a relationship. And you'd have told somebody for the 88th time, this is what I don't want, and this is what I do want. This is how to piss me off, and this is how to make me happy. And they continue to piss you off and play dumb and pretend, oh, 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 I know, my bad. You knew. Stop it with this. And you know what, Leo, you have got to go, okay? You, Yeah, you got to go, because why are you doing all that, Leo? It's too much. Isn't it? <laughs> anyway. Okay, we had to get Mr. Sassy Pants up out of here because he's doing too much. Got to go. Okay, it's about my mental health this year, baby. I ain't got time for no hooting and hollering in the background. I love that cat to death. But damn. Sheesh. Leo. Get down. Get down. It's not a thank you, because it's not a question. 
all he want to do is just is talk back all day and just and 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 steal some um you know pets and cuddles and rub up on you and uh, it's cool but baby we got we got a show to do see he uh, me paying him them three tra uh, treats was supposed to be him clocking in and payment for his you know for him co-hosting with me but no he want to come in here and get a couple of treats and dip you see how he scammed me he run off on the plug twice every time that's why some of y'all be like, where Leo at, child? <laughs> He's not doing the work. What am I paying him for? What am I paying him a treats for? He ain't even ate dinner yet. It's too much. <laughs> it's too much. Nonetheless, baby, if y'all don't keep this and get on up out my face with this performative, we're sorry, because y'all not sorry, because if y'all were really sorry, y'all would be telling y'all fellow Karens and your next door neighbors and your aunts and whoever else be out here caring in it up and asking for the manager every time you turn around, you would be telling them and you would be checking them and correcting them and telling them that that's not okay. Instead of this performative stuff, how about you record your aunt that's racist and put her in her place when she out at a restaurant treating a black employee wrong? That's what you would do. Now, that's some performative sh that I want to see. But y'all not willing to check y'all on. But y'all quick to take a, 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 a picture and pretend like that means something. Baby, it don't mean nothing to me. Keep that shit. Keep it to yourself because we don't want to see it. All right? Keep it to yourself. Moving on real quick. Look, you know, I hope y'all feeling all right. I hope your mental health and your invisible problems aren't. Check y'all up before we get to dibbling and dabbling and all of the celebrity mess and all of the polarizing things we could be discussing in the real world. Make sure your mental health is okay. Speaking of mental health, we're going to get into Tyrese in a second because it seems like his mental health is always crumbling and he's always sharing it with us. So shout out to the new subscribers. If you haven't taken a moment to consider subscribing, I mean, consider subscribing right now. Just click the button. It's free, you know? And I just want to say thank you to everybody who has and to everybody that will. Thank you in advance. And of course, before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But don't forget to think critically and independently regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. Okay. Okay. We're doing better on the likes. 220 people here, 99 likes. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. So let's take a stop over on this bus ride. Let's take a stop over to Tyrese and his Instagram and see what he got going on. Child, somebody put it in the Discord earlier. They said somebody check in on Tyrese because I'm not sure I have the bandwidth to do so. You know, you always got to take a deep breath before you, you read one of Tyrese's extremely and I do mean extremely long captions, okay? He's always got just so much going on. And nobody's trying to, you know, emasculate him or say that he doesn't have the right to, uh, you know, to be emotional. Um, but it's, 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 it's a pattern at this point. It's definitely a pattern. So let's go ahead and get into what Tyrese has going on, okay? Baby, he posted this long caption. I'm like, what is he talking about? So let's see. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what he's got going on. And I really do hope, what are y'all doing for Valentine's Day? That's what I want to know. What does your dinner consist of? Whether you're going out or eating in. Me going out on Valentine's Day with the rush of everybody else it's the same thing as going out for Super Bowl, in my opinion. Like, who wants to go to a restaurant on Super Bowl when it's going to be so crowded? You're not going to be able to get decent service. I would rather go out on another day and, like, make a meal together with my mate. And as a matter of fact, that's exactly what we're doing when I get off of here, okay? So, Tyree says, my label just dropped me on the same day that my mother passed away. He says... I really thought I would be doing much better today. All week, I feel like I was preparing myself to mentally and emotionally and psychologically get through this very tragic day for me and my family. Today, my mother transitioned of all days on Valentine's Day last year, 2022. Same year, my father died. Reggie Andrew Locke Saints was a father figure to me. It just so happens to be the same day that I got married to Samantha. Still, to this day, I have no clue as to why she filed for divorce. But ain't you with another... Ain't you with another woman now? So what? what's this really about? Is it about the label? Your parents? So, okay, all right. Just so happened to be the same day that I got dropped from my label. Imagine that. I'm all over the place. <laughs> no shit. Sure. I'm all over the place. We're supposed to take my daughter to school this morning and I couldn't even get out of bed. 
Then I got this message from Uncle Craig Davis. And this is really a personal message where it's just a motivational message from someone. And he says, this might be one of the hardest days of my life for cocktail of emotions. And he's thanking Lenny Kravitz and a couple of other people um, for holding his hand through these raw vulnerabilities, as he calls it in this song, I Don't Think You Ever Love Me. He says, iTunes link in my bio, it's now playing on all streaming platforms. And then he puts Psalms 6, 2 through 10. Have mercy on me, Lord, I'm faint. Heal me, Lord, my bones are in agony. Pray for me, please. What do y'all think about this? Oh, wait, let's go through the slides just so we can see. So he posted the termination agreement. My label just dropped me on the same day. Um, and then he's showing these images of him in the last moments by his mom's side. Um, now, I do remember this headline last year. And he's posting like headlines. He's posting that, um, you know, when he proposed to uh, or that he got married on valentine's day to samantha um and posted pictures of him and samantha being broken up i think that this is low-key silent like a dog whistle to try to get samantha to reach out to him because you know if he's with another woman which he's supp he supposed to be this this instagram model on and off on and off um, that would be a little inappropriate, right? You reflecting back on your divorce if you're supposed to be happily in a new relationship. I, I, I could be bugging with that, but I wouldn't take lightly to um, my current partner consistently just keep talking about her. Because again, what's the post really about? Is it about your label being inappropriate on a day when your mother passed? Because you get married to Samantha and that being the day that the label dropped, you really has like nothing to do with the heartbreak because that's not the day that y'all broke up, right? So I don't know. Per usual, Tyrese is all over the place with his emotions. This is something we've come to expect, but I just wanted to share this with y'all. I'm like, he's having another breakdown. Let me see if y'all can see how long ago. So this, so this was seven hours ago. So it was literally today, seven hours ago, and this is what Tyrese is going through. And per usual, he's sharing. Some may say he's arguably oversharing. But I wanted to make you all aware of that um, because it came across my desk. Shout out to Melanie Queen for the $10 super chat. It says, not run off on the plug. <laughs> oh, he one of them. Yes, he is. Big ups, girl. Say bless. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Yes, Leo be running off on the plug twice, acting like he ready to work. And clock in to co-host with me. And then he get a couple of treats and he be gone. It's terrible. But, you know, per usual, Tyrese is always crying all over the internet, oversharing, in my opinion, and becoming the next me. Um, so I want to know what you all think about it. I pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts about this? Where do you land with Tyrese and this situation? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into the... Um, to the next segment of today's show. Now, look, if you're not already aware, all right, you are on my bus. You're on the Black News bus. And the Black News bus is a social media social media stroll that covers topics inside and outside of the celebrity world. But it also covers real Black news that affects everyday people like you and me. And, you know, I always got some nuggets of Black excellence and history to give y'all. So let's continue getting right on into it. Almost 300 people in here. Shout out to them likes. Hopefully getting up a little bit more. Okay. And yes, I'm going to keep asking y'all for likes because I fell out of the algorithm. My birthday was last week. I took some time off. And when you fall out the algorithm, you need all the help you can get. I need the likes. I need the shares. I need the views. And I need y'all to help me out in, in, in the freest way possible. Unless we're trying to, you know, go out to the cash app. Now, let's talk about Monique, baby. Let's get into Monique. Monique is clapping back at people, okay? Monique is caught up in some more controversy. And before I give my thoughts and opinions about that, I want to play the clip. And I definitely want to hear what y'all think about it down below in the comments, okay? Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the Black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more Black news. All right, so let's go ahead and get into what Monique had to say to a couple of her different Black counterparts who actually are comedians as well. Crazy. This is why I hate that Monique got, got blackballed by Hollywood. 
You can take it down. Precious Spears, huh? Monique won the Oscar for Precious for a reason. She's, and like I said, people underestimate comics. She's really, really good. She's a great actress. Now, personality wise, she's always getting in trouble. Always with if it's not with another comic, Dio Hughley, it somebody. is with the industry. It's somebody. But this movie, the reading with Monique, when I tell you, I almost turned it off. This sucker was it scared me. But Monique is That's funny in it that. too. Oh, it's yeah. a horror slash damn comedy. I'ma tell you something. And Monique got it on her thing. So it's not gonna be me giving away the movie because she's got it, she's got it posted. When people are getting killed, because you know it's a scary movie, so somebody's always getting killed. The girl who about to get killed, Monique. Monique got a knife. Okay. So this is where we are with it, okay? This was Sherry Shepard and Kim Whitley speaking about Monique. Now, <clears throat> Monique had a lot to say, as she always does. You know, people from Baltimore, honestly, we always going to have a lot to say, especially when we feel like somebody got us messed up, right? So Baltimore stand up, right? And y'all know sometimes when I come on here, I'm not I'm not on Monique's side and not about the principle of what she's discussing, but sometimes her delivery, um, I found issue with. Now, I feel like I might grow and it might change later on, but honestly, honestly, Sherry Shepard, Kim Whitley, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm with Monique on this. I stand with Monique on this and let me know where it lands for y'all. I know some people may consider Monique to be problematic. I've even said she's been problematic once or twice. Although she was standing for something she needed to stand for. Right? Let's get into what Monique had to say as she responded to... See, because see, the, Sheridan got this show that they stole from Wendy and grifted to her. And now she got all this to say. I find it very interesting. So here's what Monique had to say in response to this. <laughs> see, because Monique be catching everything. She says, hello, Sherry. And what I wanted y'all to see by the way that I put it on this screen here is she actually added them both in this caption. The same thing you want to see me reading from in black is the same thing verbatim in the caption. She added them. Hello, at Sherry Shepard and at Kim Whitley. She's not playing with these ladies. <laughs> She is not playing with these ladies. She says, hello, Sherry and Kim. First, thank you for your compliments regarding my talents and performance in the reading. I couldn't help but to notice, though, you two said that because of my personality, I'm always, quote unquote, getting in trouble. Then attempted to show a connection between my personality and being blackballed, along with the fallout I had with Brother D.L. Hughley. In addition, you two, within the same breath, mentioned how we as comics are, quote unquote, underestimated. First thing, kids with their parents, criminals with the law, and slaves with their masters get into trouble. And last time I checked, I don't fit into any of these categories to get in trouble with anyone mentioned. Do you? She continues and says... When the two of you say we as comics are underrated, you, Sherry, Kim, and I are ironically all black female comics. So why do you think we're underrated? My personality is of such where I have to speak up and out against injustices. So we can stop being, as you both said, quote unquote, underrated. And if you notice, I haven't started a conversation about you two that involved any negativity in any way in all of the years I've known you two. Check my resume. I don't go knocking on anyone's door saying things that I can't substantiate. But some people have a problem with me because when they knock on my door with BS, I answer. <laughs> Anytime the team of you sisters would like to speak with the team of me and my husband and I, we welcome it. Thank you two again for the compliments. Though backhanded, and please know regardless, I still love the both of you to life. Baby, talk about the reading. 
Right. And, you know, I've seen the reading. We're going to be backstage talking about that. I think we'll go backstage to talk about the reading first at some point this week. And then I think next week I might come out with like an edited, more concise version of my review of the film. But I want to go live backstage and open the lines for all of the, the channel members to say how they feel. But, baby, talk about the reading that Monique just gave these two women. And so what makes it even crazier, someone said, not you read it like her. See, because I, I, I know how Monique talk. I know how she get down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Monique on this one. See, because if it wasn't for Sherry Shepard being grifted or gifted Wendy Williams show that was stolen from her maliciously, Sherry wouldn't be doing shit. And Sherry show not even getting the ratings that it should have, could have, would have been getting. The only thing that Sherry Shepard and Wendy Williams have in common is they're both shaped like an uppercase fucking P. She's nowhere near as entertaining or as engaging or makes you want to tune into her show. She don't have what Wendy had. Kim Whitley, damn sure ain't really doing shit right now. So Sherry feeling like, oh, I'm on syndicated TV, baby. See how long it'll last. It won't last half as long as Wendy's run on syndicated TV on that show and that slot that they gave you because they were trying to spite her. It won't last that long. And so what I really want to know is when Wendy was not in her right state of mind, and I'm not saying she is now, right? Wendy's mind was all cloudy and she was like addressing some of the stuff that Sherry was doing or saying. Sherry decided she wanted to get cute and get online and go live and, and, and clap back at Wendy. I want to see you clap back at Monique. See, because you clap back at a vulnerable adult. Say what you want to say about Wendy. I love her. I look up to her. She's done a lot for any woman behind a microphone, radio, TV, whatever the case is. Wendy's done a lot. She's just not at her peak and she's not at her best right now. Her prime is behind her. You were quick to talk to a woman like Wendy whose mind is was, was fading her at that moment. I dare you clap back at Monique like that. I bet you you won't. I bet you you won't. They said Sherry is the diet Wendy, okay? Oh. <laughs> now here's the thing. Let me play the rest of what Monique posted on her page. And this really tells a story about the dynamic between Kim Whitley and Monique. Let's get into it. But I will tell you, Monique is one of the friends I do miss. I will uh, uh, say that. Uh, not a lot of friends that, I don't have friends that I, you know, I'm not in touch with really uh, anymore. And I'm just picking the right time. I'm gonna reach out and take my chances. Uh, because I will say Monique, uh, people, think that, you know, her rhetoric and different things. But if you listen to her, Monique makes sense in a lot of things that she breaks out. She's always been very intelligent, very insightful. Um, she reads, um, and, I, and I think what really changed her life, she read this book called Black Hollywood. And if you read that book, it talks about the people that came before us and what they had to go through. And I think that sparked something in her, like they went through that? Yeah, yeah, you look at what people have gone through so that we can have, and I mean, that's the civil rights movement and moving on. And, and just like this generation, and they're like, they don't understand how important it is to vote. And so here's what I've come to learn. Monique then said a couple of things. She didn't had to get Kim Whitley together a couple of times. You would think that Kim Whitley, and that's why she said, I'm gonna try my luck, I might give her because she had to get you together in the past a couple, more than once. You would think Kim Whitley was tired of being popped in the mouth. You would think, right? Outside of the fact that people really don't even remember who you are. They think that you and the woman who played the mother on Sister Sister are the same person. Jackie Harris or Jack A. You would think that she was tired of really being told about herself, by, but she she tries it and she tries it and she tries. You tell me the last thing Kim Whitley has done. Don't worry, I'll wait. 
Monique is doing some things. Kim Whitley is being a background backup speaker on this podcast between or whatever the show it is that her and Sherry are doing. And Sherry's ahead of herself because she feels like she's on syndicated television. Again, I dare one of y'all to, to, to guesstimate how long that will last. And the fact of the matter is, people don't remember Kim for being Kim. They remember her for looking like Jackette. Someone said the last time we seen her was next Friday. Hello? And how long ago was last next Friday? Don't, don't worry. I'll wait. What year did it last Friday? No. Because it's seeming from the nine nines of the 2000s. Exactly. 2002. Right? Moving right along. I want to know from you all, Stickies, whether you're on the bus right now or if you're chasing the bus, which means you weren't here live, you're watching the replay. What are your thoughts about the situation? And are, do you stand with Monique? Do you feel like Monique is still being, quote unquote, problematic? She shouldn't have said anything. But per Monique, in her words, she said, you know, people deem me to be problematic, but people come to my door with BS. But when I respond, I'm wrong. I'm problematic. No, she responded to people who had her name in their mouth. And she has that right. Okay, she has that right. All right. So that's that. Now, now all right, y'all. Y'all know things always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. Let's get into this next story. And don't forget to check in on your mental health in the meantime and in between time. Someone said, I'm confused. What did they say about Monique that was so bad? Mm, what did Monique say to them that was so bad? Monique responded in a respectful way to the criticism that they had about her and her quote unquote behavior and the quote unquote trouble it gets her into. So if you feel like they didn't say anything bad, Monique definitely didn't say anything bad. She matched their energy in a way where she was able to highlight, I've never said anything to you two ladies about this. We're black women. We're black comedians in Hollywood. And if nobody stands up to make sure that we're paid equally, treated the same and everything else then who will so mm, she wrote half a dissertation right a quarter of a dissertation i would say well it, it wasn't really that long it looks that long because of the way it's formatted but what did they say that was bad okay well what did monique say? Oh, monique responded to what they said and it is what it is okay <laughs> it is what right it was just a few sentences it really wasn't a dissertation but instagram's format will make you think that it was a dissertation right Nonetheless, let's move on to a serious topic. And again, I appreciate y'all for being here and showing love to the channel. Black media is really important, okay? And especially to be tapped into um, a Black content creator that can keep it real, can get serious, can laugh and joke. Um, it's it's kind of rare, right, that you find a content creator that has range. Whether I'm that for you or not, I feel like I am, but hey. Shout out to y'all for supporting the stream, however it is you can. Three, five, ten dollars on Cash App. Thumbs up, subscribe, all that other stuff. Let's talk about Michigan State University, though. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. All right, so let's talk about yesterday. I just want to give a couple of bullet points. Most of us know the majority of what took place on Monday right? Very unfortunate situation, right? So Monday night, if you don't already know, I'm just going to give you a couple points. Won't be talking long about this at all. Um, but I do want to talk about violence and mass shootings and some of the statistics here in the United States. So Michigan State University, there was a gunman who opened fire on campus, leaving three dead and five injured, and all of the five injured are in critical condition, unfortunately. Now, they have yet to determine any motive for the crime, but they did discover a three-page document that listed several other locations in Michigan, New Jersey, and Colorado that he intended to attack as well. Now, law enforcement officials at the scene were able to recover the shooter's two firearms that he had and the numerous magazines he had as well. He was finna keep going. Now, the shooter turned out to be this man you see on the screen, or should I say this monster you see on the screen, 43-year-old shooter. His name is Anthony McRae. He was found unalived from a self-inflicted gun wound. Let it be known 
cowards like this, um, when it comes time for them to get caught, they would rather take themselves out than to deal with the consequences of what they've done. And that's exactly what he did. So it's a shame to think that when you attend a school, any school, K through 12, college, whatever the case is, that you have the risk of being shot and taken out. It really, really sucks that three people are deceased, okay? Because they were showing up to Michigan University to get an ed education to better themselves, okay? But he was able to get off of the campus and when the police were closing in on him, that's when he unalived himself. Now, really he should have done that first. That's a, like if you're that miserable in life that you're going to take other people out and then when it comes time for you to be apprehended, you're going to take yourself out. You should have just done that. Leave everybody else out of your misery, right? But those are my thoughts. What I do want to let you know about this situation is in 2019, this same coward pled guilty um to a gun charge now he served 18 months in prison for having a loaded weapon in his vehicle um they were able to see through all of the writings and things that they found on the scene that he considered himself to be a loner he considered himself to be an outcast and he considered himself to be somebody who was never noticed by others Okay, so investigators were able to determine that Anthony walked from his home to Michigan State University, but had zero connection to the university or any of the victims. Okay, so um, that is, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, somebody just left a foolish comment in the chat. <laughs> Stop. So he lived with his dad. He was 43 years old, lived with his dad. Um, but his father is cooperating with law enforcement as the investigation continues, okay? And so I want to know what your final thoughts and unanswered questions are about this situation. And I'll share mine with you as you comment yours down below in the chat. Um, what I've noticed is, I, I like I, I just don't understand why they don't just take themselves out first before they go attacking random people who don't know them, don't know their situation. And his struggles are none of these random people's business, nor should they have to pay the price for his misery. They shouldn't have to pay the price. And the saddest part of it all is if we get into statistics. This is just the seventh week of 2023, the seventh week of the year. And do you know that this is the 67th mass shooting here in America thus far? I'm gonna repeat that for you all. It's just February 14th, seven weeks into the year. And this is the 67th mass shooting here in America. And this is data that I was able to acquire from the gun violence archive database. And I counted them out one by one on my paper. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show it to you. This is, um, this is pathetic. This is a problem. You know, I used to rush to cover mass shootings, but I realized how taxing it is. I'll cover one every now and then, but could y'all imagine if I covered 67, you know, mass shootings on my channel in general. So these are all of the different, and it tells you all of the different fatalities and things of that nature. And you can see we are up to 67 as of today. Again, this is the Gun Violence Archive database. This is really sick, sad, and pathetic. People in Michigan are scared to death. Again, he intended on attacking several other schools. Two of them were in New Jersey, um, and they were in, I think, Colorado and Michigan as well. He had plans on attacking several, several, several different learning institutions. And this is sad, and it's scary. It's scary. It really is. So honestly, prayers out to anybody who has been affected by this unfortunate school shooting, these students or admin staff, whoever, they started releasing the identities of some, but shout out to anyone who's been affected by this school shooting and really any other school shooting that we've experienced this year or in general. It's really sad. It really is. But those are my final thoughts, unanswered questions, but I pass the question off to you, Stickies. 
What are your thoughts and where do you land with this um, MSU mass shooting? Okay. Now, let's get into Lil Duvall and how disgusting and trifling he is. Lil Duvall has never been, he's never been funny to me. <laughs> like he has literally never been funny and i guarantee you unless you're a creep these tweets are going to blow your mind he's gross and matter of fact gross don't even begin to 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 describe and i can't believe that it took this long for for these tweets to resurface for somebody to say this is a problem it's a problem let's read through some of these tweets we getting through it today. So, and these are these are screenshots that I got myself. I have one other screenshot that I need to show you that came from somebody else. And you'll be able to see that source as well. But these are not fake tweets. I went and I grabbed these tweets and I searched his tweets via keywords myself. I didn't get these secondhanded from somebody else. You know, sometimes people can fake a tweet. They'll Photoshop and make it seem like you tweeted something you never tweeted. Not the case here. So Lil Duval says in 2012, December 27th, he says, whenever my daughter period starts, that's when I'm going to be the first dude to dog her out. What? He also ended up saying on September 12th of 2012, be real, fellas. If you fuck the girl when she has a daughter that you've seen grow up, would you fuck her when she grew up? Another tweet here says from 2010, February 27th, the hashtag is Justin Bieber possessed fan. Oh my God, Justin, can you shoot off in my daughter's ear? And please believe if, if, if you don't understand slang terminology, it means bust a nut. Oh my God, Justin Bieber. Can you bust in my daughter's ear? <laughs> I know that they like to say that this generation and this day and age in 2023 is either way too politically correct or way too sensitive. But one thing that I'm glad about, and, and, and two things can be true at once, right? I'm glad that we haven't normalized shit like this anymore. I'm glad that we live in a day and age where cancel culture is a thing. It could be a good and a bad thing, but I'm glad that we are becoming hyper aware, if you want to say, to the point where we can say, come on, bro, that's not right. It sucks to think that in 2010 and 2012, when he was tweeting shit like this, nobody had enough guts to say, this is wrong. Like, what's wrong with you? I guess because he's a comedian, they can veil, they can veil their, their inappropriate thoughts under the, the 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 veil of 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 comedy comedians can just say any now don't get me wrong i do feel like we and again it's a, it's a thin line moderation is a gift should comedians not be able to say nothing no but joking about rape and molestation any child your own child whatever child is not okay are you serious let me show you this other tweet this is this is what i feel is arguably the worst but all of them are trash all of them are trash. All of them are trash. All right. Shout out to the NC Beat for grabbing this one. This one has been deleted, but the rest of them I grabbed myself. Okay. Same hashtag as we saw in the last one. Hashtag Justin Bieber possessed fan. Hey, Justin, can you please rape me or my daughter and then hit me with a bat if I get out of line? In what world is this funny? In what world is, are, 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 are any of these tweets a laughing matter? How were we even letting this type of stuff slide back in the day? And here was the most appalling part of the discovery and these tweets resurfacing out of all of it. I'm seeing people this morning on Black Twitter in which I am a proud member of the board, a representative of Black Twitter, okay? People excusing this shit. And saying, 
Y'all are reaching. Y'all taking these tweets out of context. Y'all are soft. Excuse me? Are you not embarrassed? Are you mad? What do you mean taking them out of context and we soft? I don't know what it is about black men in the entertainment industry. And y'all feel like they can say any sideways thing out their mouth about sexualizing children, other children, they own children, joke about rape and molestation. And y'all really want to let that rock because they black and in the industry. First of all, Lil Duval has never been funny. Never been funny. But this is why I say all male midgets are evil. I said what I said. The leprechauns, the midgets, whatever you want to call all, all male midgets are like, what is wrong with you? And this is his brand of comedy. Now, don't get me wrong. Glorilla ain't my cup of tea. She is not my cup of tea. But I will tell you this, it's mighty strange how Lil Duval can just wake his short ass up one day and say, shit, nobody be named Gloria. Da -da. Like, why, why do you just be coming at women and kids all the time, out of nowhere, with your unfunny ass? It's weird. It's strange. It's deranged. If y'all don't find that abnormal, stay the fuck away from me and mine. Honestly, I'm ready for the aliens. As a matter of fact, the aliens have been hovering around for, uh, for the last couple of weeks. Please, if you're going to zap anybody up, zap him up, aliens, and zap up that dancing gorilla dude, right? Big groove. Zap them up because we, we about tired. We tired. Out of pocket for that shit. Way out of pocket. What do you gain from that? It's too much. This was the only tweet that he had deleted out of some of the stuff that I was seeing today. And then I just started searching keywords, rape and this and that. Who says this? Even if he would have, whatever. I'm not, I'm not playing hypothetical with this. We can focus on the facts because they're egregious enough. Why? Let's go to the bush and get to the next goddamn topic. This is nasty and this done pissed me off all over again. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Trifling. Thank y'all for hitting thumbs up on this video. And shout out to all of you all. We're going to segue right into the next topic, which is uh, Rihanna's halftime performance, okay? The ratings are in. I already talked about the halftime performance, and it was a really long video, as a matter of fact. But um, what I want to do is we, we need to talk about the ratings. I know a lot of people had a lot to say about the performance. They felt like it was lackluster. Um, and make sure you comment down below about Lil Duval. What do you think? I see some people in the chat saying that they're going to unfollow him. Listen, it is what it is. I'm not here to tell you to unfollow him. I'm just here to let you know the type of disgusting mess that he thinks is comedy. Trifling. Now, shout out to the people who were on the live. We had over 400 people in this live. I was talking about Rihanna's halftime show. Like, right as the game ended and then the nfl struck me and they took the video down and i was able to get the video back up but it, it had already killed the views the video didn't do that well it has like five thousand views but it would have been a lot more because right when i ended the video we were at four thousand views and while i was asleep at three o'clock in the morning the nfl took it down but you know what that's neither here nor there it is what it is what i want to tell you is this i know there were a lot of thoughts and a lot of things being said and there was a lot of good dialogue and discussion um, pertaining to relationships in general in that video. So the video's back up. If you want to go back and watch, I saw some people asking, Jane, can you put the video back up? It's back, okay? The halftime ratings were better than you think. I know a lot of people feel like it was lazy. They feel like it was lackluster. They felt like it was given here, God damn it, Y'all wanted me to perform. And <laughs> a lot of people felt like it was like a farewell performance. Like this is the last thing y'all gonna get. I'm focused on makeup, my man and my kids. 
it is what it is. But like I told you in that video, I knew she was pregnant before her representative and her team came out and confirmed it. Okay. And there were 118.7 million viewers. So almost 119 million viewers. Okay. So that would make it the second most watched halftime show on record behind Katy Perry's 2015 performance. And that performance really wasn't that great. It really wasn't. I remember Katy Perry's performance and I do enjoy a, 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 a great, a decent amount of, of, of Katy Perry's catalog, but it really wasn't. But I, I, you know, people that like Molly Cyrus, like Katy Perry, you know, the whites. So, um, you know, it, it, it had, it had its highest viewership in six years. So, and a lot of people feel like the pregnancy announcement out overshadowed the performance It may be so, but it was a business move for her. You know what I mean? This was a big old fancy commercial. If you didn't know, celebrities do not get paid for the halftime performances. It's nothing more than promo for them. So if it's a moment to promo, not to mention Rihanna's streams on Spotify and Apple Music and everywhere else went through the roof, through, went through the roof, right? During the halftime performance. And you saw she took that pause and put on some fancy makeup in the middle. You can't tell me that these fancy sales ain't up right now because I myself was browsing a fancy website. And all we've been talking about in Discord is what's good for you, what's not. Okay, well, I'm getting this, you know, the blot and power powder and different things like that. So I know the fancy sales have got to be up. And I already have a couple of fancy, um, fancy products that I really do love and enjoy. And as a matter of fact, that I've, um, that I've run out of, okay? Because this highlighter, this is highlighter Hustler Baby. It's 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 pretty bomb, but it's also all gone. <laughs> In addition to her lip cream, but nonetheless, um, you know, Rihanna did her thing, regardless of what you want to say. Um, she wasn't out there with 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 heels on, but she was on those those uh, floating. Uh, platforms and that seemed dangerous enough with it in and of itself right because if she had on heels she could have easily tumbled backwards forwards and that would have just been disastrous so it was kind of beautiful to see those platforms go back and forth someone on tiktok had did a thing where they put it in super fast forward mode and you could see the flotation and the um how equal all of the lifting and things were and 60 seconds, and it that was really dynamic, the engineering of moving those things up and down. But hey, Rihanna, she announced what she announced. Um, a lot of people's theory is she wore red and everybody else had on white because she was supposed to be, they were supposed to be like sperm and she was supposed to be like moving down the fallopian tube, baby. People, people got a lot of different... A lot of different predictions and, 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 and interpretations of it, but um, it averaged an impressive 113 million viewers on Sunday, a 1% increase in comparison to last year's big game um, and the broadcast greatest viewership in six years. So um, 106 million of the viewers watched the game on Fox and the Spanish language feed on Fox Deportes while the remainder opted for Fox and NFL digital platforms. Another person that I do think deserves to be shouted out pertaining to Rihanna's performance is the girl who did the, um, she did the ASL interpretation, you know, for the people who are hearing impaired. And so they need sign language and people to, you know, perform it and, tr and translate what's being said. That is a girl right here from right here in Baltimore. She went to Bowie State University, I believe. And um, she really did her thing. I watched it um, when she was dancing and kind of, you know, translating via sign language. Really amazing. And shout out to her. She had really high energy as well. So the NFL, look, they had its highest viewership in six years. Okay. So say what you want about Rihanna, right? Should she have turned it down because she was pregnant? Should she have done more? The baby was the special guest. Um, any and all thoughts down below in the comments. Um, and I can't wait to hear what you all think about that as well, Stickies. Now, moving on to the next subject, baby, because we we gone through these topics today. Ain't going to be no <laughs> two, three, four hour live today, baby. We, we, we going to have to get it in. And let me know if y'all 
how y'all feel about me running through these topics a bit faster than usual. Because I know some people complain about my longer videos, although I'm having fun the whole time. I realize sometimes I do be having too much fun and the videos end up kind of long and everybody can't watch a four hour video. So I'm taking some feedback and also realizing that I need to save some energy for some other things when I get offline. So on another episode of what the hell is wrong with y'all? On another episode, remember I was telling y'all in the beginning of this video about this woman here in, in, in Maryland, in D.C. She owned a daycare. And as a matter of fact, her name is um, Shantiri Weems. She uh, owns a daycare. And well, she owned a daycare because this was June of last year. And she got a couple, she got approached by a couple of the children who were in her care because her husband would drive the uh, the van, bus, whatever, to transport the um, children back and forth. And she was approached by a few different parents that said, listen, your husband is showing my child porn. Very young child, because we're talking about a daycare. Um, and, you know, just being accused of being an overall creep, right? Over molestation, grooming them, whatever it was he was doing, right? I think grooming is the best term for right now. And so what she did was she invited him to a hotel. They went to the hotel and she shot his ass. Now he ain't die. He all right. But she shot his ass. And for real, in my opinion, she did the right thing. She, I mean, let's go ahead and go over what, because she's been sentenced. And I want to go over this sentencing with you all and see your, your thoughts and your feels on it. Okay. All right, let's get into this. And this is actually coming directly from the United States attorney's office from the district of Columbia. So they ain't playing no game. They aren't playing any games at all. If you haven't already taken a moment to hit the thumbs up button, please do so right now. And let's keep the show going. Get into this black owned business, Dickies. It's got things for inside your home, outside your home, and even on the go. JasmineMadeIt.com is your new destination for black girl magic mugs, tumblers, and even wine glasses. You can even customize the tumblers and wine glasses. There's a lot going on for a low price over at jasminemadeit.com. And if you've been serious about wanting to support more Black-owned businesses, here's your chance. Let jasminemadeit.com handle all your problems for family and friends. You ever had a friend over and they just wasn't catching a hint or paying the rent? Y'all asses all get to step in. <laughs> yeah, tell them to get to step in with this nostalgic Mart themed doormat and shop over a dozen different doormat designs over on jasminemadeit.com. All right, stickies, you know what time it is. It's time to put your money where your mouth is and shop black today. Make life easier for you and your household by taking your family's hot or cold beverages on the go with one of these unique tumblers. It's insulated to keep your beverage at temperature and it comes with a few different reusable straws and even the specific brush that you need to wash it so you can keep it sanitized and germ free. It's got all kinds of designs to match your mood or style. So grab something for your wife, the hubby, or even the kids over on jasminemadeit.com. That's jasminemadeit.com, and I'll see you over there. <clears throat> All right, and don't forget, you can use, ooh, <clears throat> you can use my code Jane for 10% off of your purchase, J-A-N-E for 10% off, and there is no minimum purchase requirement. So head on over there for a Black-owned business support, Okay. <clears throat> mm. got to clean my throat <clears throat> all right so let's get into this woman and her sentencing black woman too so baltimore woman sentenced to 48 months in prison for shooting her husband in a dc hotel so her name um as i shared with you all earlier is <clears throat> Um, Shantiri, William, uh, Shantiri Weems, 
50 years old of Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, as a matter of fact, it was a DC hotel, but it actually happened. She's actually based out of Pikesville, which is hella Baltimore. DC is to the side. DC is not considered to be a part of Baltimore, if y'all don't know. But um, she was sentenced today at 60 months in prison. Um, 60 months. That's not 48 months. Why they got conflicting things? Either way, four years, right? Um, um, the execution of the sentence suspended for all but 48 months for aggravated assault on July 21st, 2022. <clears throat> she shot her husband um, at the DC, um, NDC. Now she pled guilty on November 28th to one count of aggregated, um, aggravated assault and one count of carrying a pistol without a license. Now the judge accepted uh, accepted the defendant's plea and sentenced her to 60 months of incarceration with the execution of the sentence to be suspended as to all but 48 months for the aggravated assault and the 24 months of incarceration with the execution of the sentence for carrying a pistol without a license to be suspended as to all 24 months. Now, following her release, she will be placed on 24 months of supervised probation. Now, according to the government's evidence in July, when she drove down to DC, she confronted her husband at the hotel regarding allegations that the victim had been molesting children at her daycare. Now, after shooting her husband, she barricaded the hotel room by placing her back against the door, preventing officers from coming inside. After approximately 25 minutes, officers forced entry and apprehended her. A search warrant was obtained and executed in the hotel room. Inside, officers found her firearm in her purse and a note written that, that she wrote, um, evidencing her intent to shoot the victim. And announcing the sentence, the U.S. Attorney and Metropolitan Police Department chief commended the work of those who investigated the case. You needed to be commended the woman who did it because y'all need to start castrating these molesters, okay? Shit. They also acknowledged the efforts of those who worked on the case from the U.S. Attorney's Office, including paralegal specialists and the assistant U.S. Attorney's and the SODV interns. And finally, they expressed appreciation for the work of the assistant U.S. attorney who investigated, indicted, and prosecuted the case. Mm. That's some bullshit, okay? See, because the reason why molesters get off with stuff like this is because they aren't taught their lesson the first time. Do I need to bring up R. Kelly or do I not? I'm just saying. I'm just I'm just asking. I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking. They don't learn. see y'all need to start burning one ball off each time or at least branding the balls. They on the sex offender registry, brand the balls with sex offender S O R. Yeah. Yeah, cuz maybe then they won't do it no more. Y'all mad at her for doing some of the shit the government need to be doing. We need to go back in time and bring back, what do they call it? Cruel and unusual punishment. When it comes to protecting the children and people who violate children, something that some a, a, a lot of people don't even heal from when they grow up. Yeah, we need to start stoning and branding and all that other type of stuff and rape and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I can find the information to put money on her books, let me tell you how not only will I donate, I'll let y'all know how y'all can donate some damn four years for doing what the government should be doing. Don't make no damn, they said on the forehead so we could see it. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if her husband got that much time. That's the question. That's the real question. Yes, he did used to be a cop. Yes, he did. So, of course, he's going to get more of a slap on the wrist than anything. Y'all up here punishing her. And is she going to be able to get out and still run her daycare? He done ruined her freedom, ruined her record, ruined her life, ruined her business name. She clearly cares about these kids. And she's willing to protect them more than the government will. Child, I just... just <laughs> Y'all need to start castrating some of them. Seriously.
It's a mess. It makes no sense. Shoot. Got me mad. Black woman right up here in Pikesville. Right here in Baltimore. She drove to D.C. I don't know why she drove to D.C. to shoot him. But either way, she would have met the same fate. But, you know, D.C. closer to the capital and stuff like that. Not only the capital of uh, the capital of the United States, but nonetheless, hey, look, her emotions was in the way. And she just like, listen, however I need to shoot him, I need to shoot him. He probably thought they was on some type of romantic getaway. Oh, you, we going to the D.C. hotel? Oh, yeah, let me show up in my best. Show up in your best, bitch. Shoot you. Leave them damn kids alone. Lord have mercy. It's outrageous. It's completely outrageous. All right. Let's move on to the next story. Like I say, like I say all the time, I know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. We're going to get into this next story. But of course, don't forget to check in on your mental health in the meantime and in between time. Okay. All right. Now, I ran across this story. I ran across this piece of positive black news, which is very necessary, right? Making standalone videos about positive black news, nobody clicks on them. Nobody watches them. People act like they're so tired of the negativity, but they don't click on the positive stories. And so I have to mix in positive stories under messy titles, and I have to cover messy stuff in order to get people to absorb and consume positive black news and happenings in our community. And that's sad, but look, I get it. And I've realized the format and I'm gonna continue to do it, okay? So, and and if you haven't already taken a moment to hit thumbs up, make sure you do so. If, if at the very least, it's because I'm providing you balanced information about the happenings in the black world, positive, negative, real news, all that stuff, okay? I try to be well-rounded and well-balanced over here, okay? Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. So this story that we are getting into, this 19-year-old HBCU student received 25K from Pharrell Williams for gun safety technology. Now, her name is Kayla Austin. She's a 19-year-old sophomore at Howard University. Okay. Shout out to Marilyn. She pitched and won $25,000 at Pharrell Williams' Mighty Dream Forum and Black Ambition in Norfolk, Virginia last year. Now, her patent pending technology called My Guns Been Moved provides gun owners with a 24-7 monitor and notification if their gun has been moved. The idea was one of many to win last year's Mighty Dream Forum, which took place in November. So the idea came about 12 years, um, came up, came about at 12 years old after she participated in a youth program, hearing a family member's story and watching the news on gun violence in Chicago. She had many sleepless nights thinking about how she could use technology to provide a better gun safety for parents to protect their children. Now, doesn't this remind us of a story that we've heard recently? The story of the six-year-old in Virginia who shot his first grade teacher because he snuck his mom's uh, weapon, um, registered weapon, out of the home and was able to shoot his teacher after he had been suspended for a day. After the day before, he had smashed her phone and broke it right? This sounds like something very useful. And you see how so many people are like dropping off because I'm talking about something positive. People are only here for the mess. If you're here to support like black people, and if you really want to understand some of the positive things, if you can only sit down at a table and talk about messy stuff and you have nothing positive to talk about, then that says a lot about what you're interested in. But stop lying to people and saying that you want to hear about positive stories and you're tired of blogs posting negative stories because when people do dig into positive stories and innovative stories and progressive black stories, y'all leave because it's not quote unquote, interested enough for y'all. So some people don't even know what they want. But the six-year-old who shot his teacher down in um, Newport News, Virginia, really sad situation. And I can only imagine if she, if this mother had a technology like this, what she really would have been able to done or really prevent, 
right? Even though it seems like the child was just out of control in general. The fact that he was able to take the gun, sneak the gun from the home. He knew how to turn the safety off of the gun. A six-year-old, sneak the safety off of a gun, aim, shoot, and fire, and hit his target. Just one shot. He was able to hit a six-year-old with that type of accuracy. What are his influences? And so if something like this was available in general, or let's not even let's let's not even limit it there. Not only if something like this was available, if something like this was mandatory for any household with a child or in general, this could make a world of difference. This could make a world of difference. You want to own a gun, then pay the, I don't know, I don't know what this service costs. It might be $70 or whatever the case is. People should be mandated, especially if they have children, to have a patent and a service like this that lets them know when their firearm has been moved. Because how many people will it protect? How many people will this te this first grade teacher? I couldn't imagine being a first grade teacher and thinking my six year old gonna come to school, my six year old student gonna come to school and shoot me, and she was injured in her hand and her chest, and still in the midst of being injured, still trying to shoot the rest and flee the other students to safety. We're living in crazy days and times, and I think that this this nineteen year old right here might have really struck on something that needs to be mandated nationwide, if not globally, for people who want to have a child and own a weapon or own a weapon and have a child, however you want to put it. This is an amazing, innovative thing that she's done. But you know, Black people, we're innovative as hell. We've innovated and moved the needle forward with so many of the things and the basic luxuries and 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 um, things that we we have and we use in in in, in a day to day life and world. Did you know the person who made Jack Daniels alcohol was a black man, but the 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 slave master at that time took credit for it. You know the spatula, the lawnmower, the monkey wrench. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But Black excellence is not talked about nearly enough, nearly enough. And so I wanted to bring that up because I feel like it's important, it's imperative, and it's necessary. It's very, very necessary. Shout out to Vanessa Waller, who sent a $9.99 super chat. Thank you so much. I do appreciate your support to the channel. Okay. I appreciate it. And to everybody who has shared this video via group chat, text message, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, however it is that you share videos, that means a lot as well. And if you haven't already considered subscribing to the channel, definitely make sure you do so now. It's free, okay? You don't got to spend $9.99 like Vanessa did. You can just hit the thumbs up button, okay? So, yeah, we got to put some positive energy out there. We get to the point where we, we be on the blogs and all we see is Krishan and the Zeus Network and this. And we think that, like, that's all that we got going on. It's not. It's really not. So now, what it's time for is it's time for us to get into our Black history moment. And sometimes Black history isn't always things that has happened in the past. Sometimes black history is happening in the present. And I do believe that the positive black news that I just gave you is black history. It's just present day black history. It's not always digging back into the black and white crates. Um, sometimes it's what's going on right now, but I do have some information that I do want to give you regarding black history and the misuse of a term that we throw around so frequently. And the term that we're going to be speaking about today and today's Black History moment slash lesson is Uncle Tom. A lot of y'all don't even really understand where that term came from, how it came about, and why y'all call certain people Uncle Toms. Let's get into it. Drop them pancakes down below. Thank you for that. But also, please hit thumbs up on the video because it's free. Now let's spend a little bit of time with our ancestors or at least listening to them because you know they always tell us you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. So let's get into a little bit of black history with this black history moment.
All right, and we are back. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Let me put it bigger on the screen so that you all can read along. It's a decent amount of information, but it's definitely pertinent and vital information. And while some people may call it, they may think that it's boring, it's because all they want to see is Black people fight in drama. And we need to be about more than that. We need to prioritize and get ourselves to realize, I want to sit down and I want to learn and I want to listen to some of the things about us that are positive so that I can regurgitate these things. Hair salon and barbershop talk shouldn't all be gossip. Let's talk about our history in these places. I get it. It sounds corny to some people, but people want to see the change and they're tired of the drama, but they don't want to do anything to contribute to the positive ask of the typical conversations that Black people have on a day-to-day -day basis. So most people have heard of or used the term Uncle Tom when we refer to a sellout, a quote unquote sellout. But did you know that the reference is actually total, it's totally wrong. The real Uncle Tom was a hero. His name was Josiah Henson. And he was an abolitionist who helped free slaves. Okay. He helped slaves escape among other great things. So Uncle Tom was a man who refused to beat Black women. He refused to tell on other slaves. He would put cotton in other slaves' bags at night so that they wouldn't get beat. He helped 100 slaves get free long before the Underground Railroad ever even became a thing. Josiah Henson was born into slavery in 1789 in Charles County, Maryland. Whoop, whoop. Shout out to us. But growing up, he watched his father receive beatings for standing up to his slave owner and also witnessed his father's ear being severed as a part of the punishment and also his father being sold off. Upon the death of his owner, Henson, who also separated from his family in an estate sale, he remained on his new owner's farm in Montgomery County, Maryland. Wow. Not too far from me at all. Definitely right here around about Baltimore. And so he was an adult. As he aged, he rose to become a trusted enslaved and supervised other enslaved people on the farm. However, he used his new position to make his escape from slavery. Now, following the Underground Railroad, Henson escaped from Maryland to the province of Upper Canada, Ontario, in Canada with his wife, and four children by way of the Nigeria River in 1830. Now, Henson worked on farms in his first years in Canada to support his family. And in 1834, he founded a Black settlement on rented land. Now, he purchased 200 acres of land in Kent County and founded a settlement and laborer's school for the fugitive slaves. Now, he later became a Methodist preacher and a conductor on the Underground Railroad between Tennessee and Ontario, helping the enslaved escape from slavery. He also served as a military officer in the British Army in Canada. So stop calling these sellouts Uncle Tom. That's a compliment. It's Sambo that was the sellout who would do anything for his slave master's approval. Uncle Tom is a man to be respected, not associated with the Sambo dog. And so I bet you, you didn't know that. That's that. These are things that a lot of people don't know. And so when we talk about the etymology of a term, and et etymology is really a term or a word over time and how, how the, the, the definition, the meaning or the usage of it has changed over time. The etymology has changed over time, but it's time that we reclaim ownership of that that phrase, Uncle Tom. We need to let people know, stop. Y'all referring to people as Uncle Toms who are sellouts. It's, a, it's not a little bogus. It's very bogus. Revisionist history is a thing. So we need to take our power back and speak about Uncle Tom and his legacy and what he did as opposed to using this term to outcast and exile people, which don't get me wrong, when we call people Uncle Toms, we know what we're saying, but we need to use a different term because the original Uncle Tom did a lot to liberate us. And so when we talk about 
the etymology of this term, it's been turned upside down to make us frown upon the original Uncle Tom who stood against everything that the term in 2023 stands for. It's important for us to understand our history. And that's what these Black History Moments are all about here on my show. And I, I don't know who else or what else you're watching, but that's what it's about here on my show. That's what it's about here on my show. So it, it it's, it's, it's a lot. Stop calling sellouts Uncle Tom's because the real Uncle Tom stood for the opposite of everything that that term implies, honestly. It isn't always past events. Sometimes black history is happening right now. And I've given you two examples. The last story was about something that's happening right now. The story I'm talking about right now is about past events. So it's really important that we understand where these terms came from and who decided that they wanted to turn around and demonize his name and the term. I really doubt it would be any black person. It sounds like white supremacist work to me. That's just, that's just, that, th those are just my thoughts, but that's how the word and the term has, 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 has evolved negatively over time. And it speaks against the true history of what uncle Tom was about. If you didn't know, now you know. Okay. Um, that's this moment in Black history. Let me see. Olivia says they never mentioned the stuff, the other stuff. The six-year-old did what was it? Oh, he did. He did a lot of stuff. I've done two videos on it. I did an edited video that's really efficient. Um, I I, I did an update on a six-year-old who shot his teacher in Virginia, and it goes into all of his previous behavior and all of the marks that the school missed. So I don't want to take up much of this video and in getting into that, but I did it and you don't even have to sift through an hours long video. The last video I did on it, I believe it was like seven minutes. So if you look at the, my, some of my, it was probably actually the last upload. The last upload I did was an update on a six year old who shot. Go watch that. It's just a six, seven minute listen. You don't even have to sift through no long video, but it's there and I put it in uh he did a lot. They should have been expelled, that little boy. They should have been expelled him because he placed the other children in danger. Can you imagine if the teacher wasn't the one hit by that bullet, if it was a student? He even threatened one of the students and said, he, he flat, that's how they got the tip. There's a gun in this building because he flashed it to one of the kids outside during recess and said, if you say anything, I'm going to use it on you. So you know, the probability of a grown person, an adult surviving a gunshot wound like that compared to other fellow four to seven year olds or five to seven year olds is not the same. They placed everyone in danger, all the students, all the staff and the administration, they placed all of them in danger. And there's more that that school could have did, but don't get me wrong, there's more that that household could have did as well. There's no reason a six-year-old should know where your gun is, be taking your gun out your house and know how to operate it like that, a mess. But yeah, you can check out that video. The video, um, it's, it's here, but I don't wanna uh, get into that here because I'm keeping this video down to a certain like uh, time frame. Okay, so that is that, okay? I was an adult before I knew the right term to use. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it's nothing wrong with just saying tap dancer too. That's that's what I say about the guy. What's his, what's his name? Big, big smooth, you know, call him a tap dancer going about your business, but don't call him an Uncle Tom because the real Uncle Tom, mm -mm. he would have never. Okay, I'm going to show you all this and then we're going to wrap this on up and we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Okay, now, this is exactly some of what we are talking about. Mo Topic said, wow, I had no idea. I appreciate you taking the time to teach us about the true meaning of Uncle Tom. Yes, and you, you're more than welcome. It's a selfless act for me. Black history is something that 
I've always been really passionate about. If there's anybody who's able to get to DC, close to DC, I implore you to take a visit to the African American Museum for what well, the Museum for African American Heritage and Culture. All those words are in it, but I might be jumbling up the order of the words. There's this huge museum, and it's by the Smithsonian. And I remember um, between Barack Obama and Oprah, they were like cutting the ribbon. They were there at the Oprah, and there's so much Black history there that you honestly can't take it all in in one day. But there's a lot to learn there, and it's totally worth the visit. In D.C., the African American Museum for African American probably putting too much, too many words in it, but I, I went there a week into when they opened and it was just, it was so much. And when I tell you they got like regular black history, like old black history, black and white stuff, all the way down to hip hop and outcast and hip hop being spoken about there. It's, it's an amazing experience. It really is. And I do implore you all to go there. Okay. Um, so this is what I posted earlier today. It said, <laughs> dear aliens, if your plan is to take some black peoples from earth back to your home planet, I most humbly ask that you take this guy first. And I'm like, yes, aliens, please zap him up first. Cause he's, he's a, he's a tap dancer. Corn cheese. You know what time it is. You know what time it is. Shark bite. <laughs> Look at all this chicken. Look at it. Look at it. What's that? Corn cheese. Corn cheese? You know what time it is. You know what time it is. Shark bite. Mm. Look at all this. Bye. The pandemization is just way too much for me. So I looked up what it is. It's the National Museum of African American History and Culture. That's what it is. Um. But it, it is by the Smithsonian and it's totally, it's totally worth the visit. I'm telling y'all a lot to you not. It's worth the visit. I highly recommend you all check them out. Okay. So I'm going to get into the sticky note and then we're going to get out of here. Okay. I'm ready for the, the, alien, the aliens are totally ready. Um, Yeah. The Emmett Till exhibit will definitely do something to you. There, You know what? There's a couple... I'm going to take it a step further. For people who are deep in the Baltimore area, there's the uh, the Blacks and Wax Museum, which is in downtown Baltimore. I would say it's probably like an hour, depending on the time of day, right? But on a typical day, obviously not around five o'clock on a Monday through Friday, right? But uh there's the Blacks and Wax Museum, right? But I, I I would say that the two museums, the Blacks and Wax and the National Museum in, in DC, um, I would I would say they're like an hour and a half away from one another. But anybody who's like a Baltimore native, they know about the Blacks and Wax Museum, and the Blacks and Wax Museum is a, a much smaller. <laughs> Well, if you go to the DC one and then you come to the Maryland and the, Mar the, the Blacks and Wax Museum has been here way before the other one opened in DC, but um, it's kind of like two row houses combined, but there's a, there's a lot of history in there, a lot of history in there. And one of the most emotional, gruesome exhibits to absorb in the Blacks and Wax Museum. And I do recommend y'all go there if you ever come here to Baltimore. It's in downtown Baltimore. It's called the Lynch Exhibit. And you've got to either be 13 or older to go down there. Or if you're younger than 13, you need your parent to sign off for you to go down there because it's they show you exactly what was being done to us. Exactly. I feel like this should be a separate video. If I get to talk about this, how... You go down to the Lynch exhibit of the Blacks and Wax Museum, which is still open. It's been open since I was like single digits, to, mind you. So they've expanded a little bit. But you go down in there and you see a woman that's hung, noose, neck, pregnant, 
stomach cut open, cut out her fetus. Fetus then fell on the ground. Cats are eating at the eating at the fetus and the innards of the pregnant woman. You see vaginas in a jar. You see penises in a jar because they were trophies to slave owners and slave catchers and, and things like that. And you're reading all of this, um, all of this literature about exactly how and why they would do these things. Eyeballs in a jar, fingers in a jar. And these are them recreating the realness that our ancestors lived through and had to witness. If it's a day when you just want good black history, don't go down there. When you just wanted a certain amount of, don't go down there. But that's the sad and strong reality to what a lot of our answer, and a lot of times, if if whoever went through that, whether it be the male or the woman, they had your spouse watching while they did that shit. If it's the woman who's up there pregnant, hanging from the noose, they're making the husband watch them kill their lady, cut that that woman open, and the fetus fall out, and letting the animals eat it. If it's the other way around, they're having a woman sit there and watch them cut off his da 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 and put it in the jar and they had it around their homes as as like vases and trophies and things like that it 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 takes a lot and you know uh so you really got to be in the right mind state to go down there if it's something that you feel like you can handle if not you can stay upstairs because the lynch exhibit is downstairs. If you stay upstairs, you can just stick with the John Washington Carver, you know, with the peanuts and the peanut butter and all the other and, 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 and um, you know, Garrett Morgan and the stoplight and the gas mask and all that other stuff. You can stay up there with the stuff that's just like more so like this is black history. That's like what I can handle and inventions and stuff like that. But that stuff is real. It's real. So, yeah, just telling you about the museums. If you ever come here to Baltimore, I'll be thinking about doing a meet and greet, but I don't know if none of y'all are crazy and trying to kill me. So I'll be hesitant to do a meet and greet. But if I did do a meet and greet, it will, we probably would go to the Black the Wax Museum. Then we would go out to get something to eat downtown, like somewhere and do brunch. But yeah, it gets pretty crazy. It gets pretty crazy. Okay. Someone said, please talk about it more in a future vid. Okay. As a matter of fact, okay, I will. I'll, I'll brainstorm on how to present that in the correct way. Thank you, Bougie Barbie, for the um, $5 super chat. I do really appreciate that. Uh, thank y'all so much. So, 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 so much. I'm surprised so many of y'all are still here. Um, but yeah, the Blacks and Wax Museum, not only was the Blacks and Wax Museum somewhere that I had been almost 10 times before I went to college, but when I went to college, I went to Morgan State University, and one of the requirements in order for you to even attend Morgan State University was that you had to go to the Blacks and Wax Museum, and you had to go to the Blacks and Wax Museum with them on the bus as, as part of your induction process as a, as a freshman. So um, they 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 made sure you understood our, like you couldn't just step on Morgan State University's like you know property and attend there without really knowing all the stuff that we endured. So uh, yeah, the Blacks and Wax Museum has been around for quite some time. I remember being very young going, and it's still here. They be having Dollar Day, but Dollar Day it be. There'd be everything downtown, like the aquarium, the Blacks and Wax, Port Discovery, everything. There's a couple days a year when spring, in between spring and summer, when they like meet right in the middle, they have dollar day to get everybody down there. But everybody be down there. I'd rather pay full price on another day because it'd just be too crowded on dollar day. 
Um, but nonetheless, this was really great, 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 great experience. I made really good time talking about all these things. I want to get into the sticky note and then look, it's Valentine's Day. I got to get off here and get to Leo's father so that we can have a great love day. But I'm glad that a lot of you all are intrigued by this stuff. Um, it makes me really want to sit down and brainstorm how to create more black history content but it also makes me wary because a lot of people don't click on stuff that's not quote unquote messy so y'all have definitely given me something to think about and thank you all so much for that i greatly do appreciate that so what we'll do is i'm gonna get ready for the sticky note y'all already know what it is the sticky note is the motivational the inspirational quote that i give that i craft myself and it is me talking to myself about how i need to do better what i need to be worrying more and less about in order to be the best me and to reach my goals and my life's tra uh, trajectory so we're going to get ready for that i'm going to say thank you to all of the channel members we will be talking about the reading tomorrow backstage um I know I said we would talk about it yesterday, but I left work early yesterday because I had a stomach ache and I was just like really sick. So we're going to be talking about it tomorrow. Monique, the review of her movie called The Reading on BET Plus. Um, also, if you have Amazon Plus movie, uh, Amazon Prime or something like that, it's available there as well. But I do want to review it. It definitely is worth a discussion. So shout out to all the channel members. If you are a channel member, if you join the membership, shout out to you. We're going to be right back with a sticky note. And we're going to get out of here so I can go let y'all love on y'all lovers. Okay? Okay. Drop them pancakes down below. And if you are a channel member, drop your special emojis down below. Okay? We'll be right back. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? So wait a minute, you ain't joined the channel yet so that you can access special perks over here with the plainest Jane? Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain Jane. Ooh, watch this. Hey, I'm the plainest Jane. I'm a cultural commentator and informant, and I provide sticky coverage on trending stories, black news, black culture, and everyday topics with a sticky abstract perspective. <laughs> so get familiar with the perks. I've carefully curated all of these things and it's just a little exclusive glaze to amplify the way that you express yourself. <laughs> so get comfortable, get used to our official emoji over here that is the pancake stack because it's always sticky in Hollywood and in real life and especially when you spend the time over here with the plainest Jane. Like I said, I hope you enjoy the exclusive glaze that I've provided for you to amplify the way you express yourself, and I hope you enjoy the digital vibe. Hey, listen, I always want you to keep it sticky, but be sure to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. But most importantly, I hope that you're feeling all right, and hopefully you've had some time to tackle some of your invisible problems. I know I got a couple of new subscribers, and I just want to say thank y'all. I really do appreciate you. And if you're not quite feeling all right, this channel right here, once you join, it's quite help you kick back and decompress always but it'll also keep you in the know with what's happening with the best black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So again, get comfortable. The first drink is on me, all right? Act like you got some sense, and I'll see you around. But don't forget to keep it sticky 24-7 by following me on Instagram, but hit that notification bell so that you always know when I upload and you get your dose of syrup first. Now, with all that stickiness being said, the most important thing I want you to remember about this neck of the woods and the plainest Jane is Black Lives Matter. And if you don't agree, buy pumpkin, buy pumpkin. That would take you out. I don't play that shit. Now you gotta go for real. It's just that simple. Hey, look, whether you join or not, I do want you to stay beautiful, black, and blessed, and just know I appreciate your support. I'm your girl, the plainest Jane. And let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? All right now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now.
All right, and we are back. I'm lost on what the chat is talking about. They said the chair's got to be haunted, and I saw other people talking about the chair. And I don't know what. I don't know what chair y'all talk. Y'all talking about my chair? My chair haunted. I'm I'm assuming y'all talking about something else, and I just I just don't get it because I'm worried about. I'm worried about being on camera and creating the great content. <laughs> I can't keep up with every comment in the chat. Sometimes um, I get lost. Someone says, I have a connect at the National African American Museum. You probably could get a good deal. Oh, artichoke cards. Cool. Send me a message because I do definitely want to do, uh, I do definitely want to do a meet and greet. And that probably will be the starting point. And then we'll go get something to eat after that. Yeah, definitely. I went to college in Maryland and visited Be More Religiously, Never Been, um, HBCU Stand Up. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Yeah, meeting up in D.C. would be a good place to meet up because they've been. So let's get into the sticky note. And shout out to all of y'all who have stuck around, 300 of us. We went live early today. We was only five minutes late to going live. And that's only because my co-host was acting kind of crazy. Five minutes late for me is on time. Because y'all know sometimes I be, I be late and moving the time back. But nonetheless, um, all of my beautiful stickies are here this evening. Y'all showed up and y'all showed out and y'all supported me. Most of y'all hit the thumbs up button, okay? Especially because we had over 400 in the chat. We was at about like 450 in the chat and we got 343 thumbs up and there are 300 of us now. Um, so listen, make sure you hit thumbs up if you haven't already. All right. And let's get into the sticky note of the day, shall we? The following video is broadcasting live and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So today's sticky note is this, stop worrying about how it looks, quote unquote, to other people when you're handling your business and doing what's best for you. Their perception doesn't have anything to do with your progress and your priorities. The more you focus, the more you focus on how they, they, who, whoever it is you're worried about, the more you focus on how they perceive your journey, the more it becomes a deterrent if you let it. So when you're worried about and when you're fixated on how other people perceive you handling your business and doing whatever it is that you need to do to cater to the trajectory of your journey and your success and everything else, it begins to deter you because you're more worried about their reaction or their response more than what you need to be doing. It's like working a chainsaw and looking to the side and seeing what other people are saying. You know, look, you 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 cutting your fingers off. And it not to say it's as dramatic as that, but when you analyze it that way it kind of is cutting your fingers off is something that's really going to hurt you in the long run and being focused on how other people are perceiving you handling your business it's gonna it's, it's not going to serve you best and so allowing people and what this does when you're hyper fixated on other people's perception rather than your own progression you are allowing people to use your own subconscious against you. Because once people understand I'm in their head, I'm in her head, I'm in his head. Because I've been, I, I look at him crazy on purpose. I come out and I say these things about, that's wild, that's strange. You know, some people use facial expressions to do all of the work. You're doing what you need to do that's best for you and people. And you more focus on a facial expression rather than how you need to progress in your own life. They begin to use your own subconscious against you. They're reverse engineering the way that you think and using your subconscious to stop you from doing what's best for you. Stop worrying about these people. Stop worrying about their perceptions of you inching towards your progression. Stop it. Stop it. Because once they understand that as long as they can pick you apart, whether it be a facial expression, a live, if it's people making videos about you and what the hell is XYZ doing? Let's just use me. What the hell is Jane doing talking about this? Ain't getting no view. Ain't, ain't da da da. Once they learn that that throws you off balance, 
they're going to do more of that. They're going to do more of that because they realize I could just use her mind to get in the way of her. I've I done gotten into her mind because I realized she understands when I'm picking her shit apart. And now I'm going to do that 10 times fold. Don't allow anybody to use your subconscious against you. The more you focus on how they perceive your journey, the more it becomes a deterrent if you let it. So stop worrying about how it looks to other people when you're handling your business and doing what's best for you. Your perception or their perception doesn't have anything to do with your priorities or your progress. And that's today's sticky note. Now look, if it resonated with you, be sure to comment down below. I'm doing me so that I know that it's real, so that I know that this sticky note reached you. But look, if it didn't, it didn't. It's something that I have to tell myself quite, frank, uh, quite frequently. And when I craft these sticky notes, they're never really about other people. They're always about me currently or a certain place in my life or uh faulty way of thinking that I had in the past that did not serve me, that worked against me. So I'm truly always nine times out of 10, 9.5 times out of 10, talking to myself in these sticky notes. But I realized sharing my sticky notes motivate other people as well. And I'm my own life coach. And sometimes I'm being gentle to myself the way I talk to myself. Other times I'm being hard on myself, like stop this. Stop this mess. Sometimes when you realize there's a negative thought coming into your mind, you got to say, stop. Stop. Sometimes you have to be your own life coach. And for me, in the sticky notes, it's me articulating all the things that I talk to and I say to myself. Um, and I didn't realize until I started putting them into words and, and, and verbalizing them that they help that it helped other people. So make sure you comment down below. I'm doing me so that I know it's real. Okay. <laughs> Progression over their perception. Okay. Okay. It's important. You know, you, you, you may look crazy to people who don't understand your vision, your goal, your journey, and you shouldn't have to explain. And matter of fact, it's dangerous to explain your vision, your goal, and your journey to other people. Because if if they understand what your exact journey is and what you're doing and where you're headed, they can set up detours. And sometimes a detour can be your subconscious that they use against you. Other times there'll be other random ass roadblocks because they already know what you're trying to do. So they'll be trying to tear you down as you're building it and you're not even done yet. So you shouldn't have to explain to everybody that is able to see what you're doing as you're building the blocks to your next step. Let them stay lost and let them stay clueless and let them not understand what you're doing. It's not It's not for them to understand what the fuck you got going on with your life and your plan. It shouldn't make sense to them because if it does make sense to them, that means they could do something to try to throw a monkey wrench into it. So no, stop focusing on what they think and how they perceive it and focus on your priorities and your progress. That is what matters more than anything. Than anything. I used to be, and, be, and because I am a talker, like I talk a lot, that's obvious, but I used to explain all of my future moves to the people around me. And I realized when I stopped doing that, I had less roadblocks. I had less resistance. I didn't have as many, th hardly nearly as many things standing in the way of what I was trying to do. Stop announcing this shit to people who really you don't even understand if they really give a fuck about you and what you got going on. They just around to hear what you're doing next so that they can either detour it or copy it. Keep quiet, do what's best for you and let people stay clueless as to your next move. It ain't their business. It is not their business. Shout out to Bougie Barbie for, I think, rejoining the membership. Okay. And shout out to the people who are saying, I'm doing me. I see there's a lot of people. There are a lot of people saying, I'm doing me. Okay. All right. Um, okay. We got somebody from Trinidad on a bus. Shout out to you. 
Shout out to you. Yes, protect your peace at all costs. Listen, this has been such an amazing show. We got through this show in such a great amount of time. And listen, everybody, thank you so much for watching. You don't understand how much I appreciate y'all's viewership. And not me getting speechless real quick. Not, not me being talkative and getting speechless. <laughs> I appreciate y'all watching. I appreciate y'all supporting. Um, y'all know I got thrown out the algorithm. So um, me being able to get like almost 450 of us in the chat today, it meant so much to me. So if you could continue to share the video, text message, Twitter, group chat, Instagram, whatever, that would mean the world to me. Hitting like on the video would also mean a lot. Um, I would hate for y'all to miss out on the future syrup that I spill via Black News and Celebrity Entertainment. If you don't hit the subscribe button, okay? If you don't hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment down below, even if you're chasing the bus, I would really love to know how you all feel. Y'all have no clue what comments y'all leave down below in the comments after the bus is long gone and you're chasing it. How many of those comments and y'all opinions contribute to the ideas of the next video? There are some comments that really make me make another video. I'm like, well, the people talk about this. Let me make another video. So um, I love y'all so much. Thank y'all for um, tuning in in general. Make sure you check the community tab if you haven't already. If you're a channel member, you, baby, you definitely want to be back there. We're going to be talking about Monique's latest video, the reading that is on BET Plus. Some backlash that Monique has gotten for even doing that movie. We want to talk about all that tomorrow backstage because I more than likely won't go live backstage unless there's some sort of major event or something that happens tomorrow. I plan on tending to my channel members backstage and doing at least a two um, two or so, two or three hour live tomorrow for the members only where we talk about Monique's latest movie, The Reading, everything surrounding it, the backlash that Monique is getting outside of Kim Whitley and them. There's some other backlash that she's getting and I want to discuss that as well. So make sure y'all subscribe to the backup channel. It is linked down below in the description box at the TPJ Network. Another thing that I really feel like y'all are missing out on is Deeper Than Skin Deep. The very first link that you see down below in the description box is this makeup girly right here. When I tell you there is no better expert pertaining to high-end makeup reviews and high-end skincare product reviews than Deeper Than Skin Deep, Baby, I mean that. She is the best. And she be having all the high end stuff. So if you want to treat yourself every now and then, right? If you want to ask, ask your man, ask your mate, ask your whoever to get you something that's high end. Make sure you check out her channel so that you can choose the one, two, or three things you want to ask your person for. Deeper than skin deep, she really gets into it. And when I say she got all the high end stuff, don't get me wrong. I got a lot of makeup. I got the MAC. I got the um, Elizabeth, what is it? Elizabeth Arden, the Smashbox. It is. But when I tell you she got the Tom Fords and she got the this and she got, maybe her shit get more hot and than mine. Okay. And I love me a good piece of makeup. And so I definitely recommend you subscribe to Deeper Than Skin Deep. Again, it's the very first link down below in the description box. And make sure if and when you subscribe that you click on the channel, click on the video and drop some pancakes down below so that she knows who sent you. But yeah, she's definitely worth the subscription. She gives thorough reviews and I highly recommend y'all check all of her out. But listen, y'all. Make sure that you do something to decompress today. Y'all know I always talk about mental health. Drop a comment down below, whether you're on the bus, whether you're chasing the bus, which means you ain't caught us live. It means that you're watching the replay. Drop a goddamn comment, nonetheless. Matter of fact, don't even drop one comment. Drop three comments. Comment as you watch the goddamn on video. And let me know your thoughts on all of the topics that we have discussed today.
what are your thoughts? What, like, like, what are you, what are your thoughts about Monique clapping back at Kim Whitley and Sharon Shepherd, Sherry Shepherd, for the backhanded compliment that they gave Monique? Do you find Lil Duval's tweets to be disturbing? Do you think that the what's her name, Shantiri Weems? the DC woman who shot her husband for being a creep and a molester. Do you think that her sentencing was fair? 48 months, four years, any and all thoughts. I would love to hear from you all down below. Happy Valentine's day to each and every one of you. Okay. Somebody said your makeup looks good. as well. I think I, I try to keep it natural. I don't, I was going to do a little extra for Valentine's Day, but I didn't have time after I got off work and I wanted to go live early enough so that I could get off live early enough so that I could enjoy time with Leo's father enough. But I probably would have done an eye look. I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't realize that I put a little red on my lips and I never do red on my lips because I just like don't. But I did a little like reddish brownish thing or whatever. Anyway, well, nobody noticed. Um, but listen, y'all, y'all have a great day. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. But if you gonna shoot up the club, make sure you go to your bank and you have them take a couple of dollars out of your check every paycheck so that you got you got some money to get started off with your journey and taking care of them churn. And take care of them churn. Okay. <laughs> It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, I'm the plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. It was a YouTuber, and shout out to her for this good detective work, honey. Uh, she's the one who went and was able to put two and two together. The plainest Jane. That's that's the person's name, the plainest Jane. I couldn't think of what their name was on the podcast, but I wanted to go ahead and shout them out. They're the ones who did the work. All right. So, like I said, shout out to plainest Jane. She's the one who put that together. So Shekana was not lying. So when Tiny came back on some, oh, she's making it up. Mm, sounded like Tiny's voice to me. All right. And we are back. Shout out to Lovely T for shouting your girl out. Right. Back when I do that good detective work, because I do do some good detective work. But shout out to Lovely T for giving me my due diligence and my due credit on her YouTube channel. I definitely do appreciate that. Okay. So listen, I'm going to catch y'all on the next video. I will catch my channel members tomorrow backstage we i'm not sure if it's going to do i'm not sure if it's going to be a five o'clock ride or not y'all know backstage we got the five o'clock uh five o'clock ride series <laughs> but uh we'll see we'll see what time we go live tomorrow backstage for our channel moments and shout out to everybody that joined today shout out to everybody who said the cash app shout out to everybody who said the super chat y'all mean so much to me because y'all don't have to do any of that y'all don't even have to hit thumbs up or like and that's not even monetary based however you support me whether it's money viewership a subscription a thumbs up uh, a cash app or super chat, whatever listen i appreciate it and i love all of y'all because y'all are stickies and it is what it is. Hell, I had somebody sent me a damn cash app that was for $499. And they was like, Jane, can you refund my money? Because I meant to give you $4.99. And I was like, yeah, let me give you that money back. Because that wouldn't be right. Like, I could have kept it, right? But no, I got, I, I got some character. <laughs> I got some character. <laughs> so I had to send that lady her $499 back. 
Um, and she did send me the four dollars and ninety nine cents that she meant to send. So I do have a heart. You know what I mean? I got I got my little heart. <laughs> But it is what it is. I'll read you all's comments after I get off here. But I need to go ahead and end this video. Okay? I love you all so much. So, 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 so much. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But definitely make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the syrup that's spilled over here. Y'all know the syrup is black news and celebrity entertainment and things are always sticking in Hollywood and in real life. And I need y'all to drop some of the pancakes down below and stay beautiful, black, and blessed until the next time that we talk. Deuces. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.